a married put over uh, trading a long call. And, and I think that's what a lot of folks are here for. So we'll go ahead and hide that. All right, very good. Uh, real quick, let's see. Um, just want to mention why I'm here. Uh, I, I uh, made some good money trading stocks, and I lost it all in one bad trade because of not understanding risk management. Made up my mind to never allow that to happen again. And uh, while studying the lives uh, of, of great traders, I uh, ended up coming across what I'm going to call the holy grail of trading. Now, I'm not going to say that radioactive trading is necessarily the holy grail. Mm. Okay? But what I am going to say is that um, risk management is the holy grail of trading. Um, rather than just uh, trying to pick the right stocks or, or rather than just trying to uh, uh, time the market, uh, it's important to manage your losses more than anything else. And that's the, the one thing that I found in common between uh, all great traders was that they uh, were fanatical about keeping their losses low. Okay, And uh, so anyway, it's my mission. This is what I do. Uh, I lecture all over the country. Uh, teaching about how to stay out of trouble, and I think it's very important. We give away the very best parts of the system. We're going to give it away today, all right. And then, if you want more support and so forth, we are going to uh, give a little plug at the end. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, Mike, I'm going to jump out of this presentation and jump into the one that I promised, and that today was. Uh, um, here we are. Hang on. I think that's the right one. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> Got a couple of uh, couple of different things to show. Okay, uh, we're going to share uh, the the mathematical edge that married put trading has over a long call. Okay, it's it's a distinct mathematical advantage. And uh, uh, but first, a little review of rate active trading principles. Okay, first of all. Um, when uh, when we when we trade options, we want to try and buy options that are further out in expiration. Mm -hmm. Why is that, Mike? Oh, well, we just talked a hundred. We got a hundred attendees. Mm. Okay, well, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, the reason we're going to buy options further out in time is that the increase in price for time on a call or a put option is not linear. What I mean by that is that if I'm looking at two of the same strike options, if I buy something that's six months out in time. I'm not going to pay six times the cost. In addition to that, what you're referring to here is the red line, is the options that are further out in time will cost me less per day than the near-term options, but we also won't suffer a rapid time decay. The time decay of our far-out option usually won't hit until the last 30 to 60 days uh, before the expiration of that option. That's right. The reason that I uh, determined to call this style of trading radioactive trading is because this line here is uh, is analogous to the line, uh, I'm sorry, the curve rather, mm -hmm. of the decay of a radioactive element. As a radioactive element decays, okay, it begins very slowly and then accelerates uh, with time. Here's uh, a 30-day, if you were to buy a 30-day option, you might expect to pay a dollar. But the same strike price, okay, the same strike price with the uh, same underlying instrument, you might pay a dollar eighty seven. Let's just say a dollar eighty, okay, mm -hmm. for ninety days out, okay? So if you're paying a dollar for thirty days or you're paying a dollar eighty for ninety days, well what's the better deal? Well the, the further out one is the further out one, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is one of the principles of radioactive trading, okay? Now, the next uh, principle about radioactive trading is what we call the ATM bell curve or at-the-money bell curve. Mike, the, the pricing of options, if it's uh, uh, deep in the money, whether it's a put option or a call option, or it's far out of the money, the time value portion of that pricing is very low. But at the money, it swells. It's very high. And it's this principle that we base all the income methods off of. All right? <clears throat> Pardon me. But probably the most important principle of radioactive trading is that we force ideal sized trades. Now, uh, let's talk about that a little bit, Mike. If, if I were to come to you and say, Mike, 
I made a 100% return on one of my investments, mm -hmm. you'd say, well, that's great. But then what's the next question you probably ask me? Well, how much did you invest to begin with? Did you make 100% <laughs> off of a $10 investment or did you make 100% off of a $10,000 investment? That's right. Okay, that's that's usually what's going to happen. And the thing is, is if we if we risk too much, okay, if Mike, what if I was to come to you and say, uh, geez, I just lost ten thousand mm. dollars. Wow. Um, the next question is, well, geez, how much of that was your account? If my account was ten thousand dollars and I just lost ten thousand dollars, that's total ruin, right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. But if yeah, but if my account is uh, you know. Two million dollars, then losing ten thousand dollars. That's like the cost of doing business. I mean, sometimes that will happen. Sometimes you'll be up ten thousand. Sometimes you'll be down ten thousand. It's not that big a deal. And and here's the, the the important part to understand that we need to risk just the right amount. If we risk too little, then when we have a gain, it doesn't matter overall. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I have ten thousand dollars. And I double my money, but I double my money on only five of those ten thousand dollars, just five dollars. <laughs> well, that doesn't make a very big difference overall to the account. On the other hand, if I risk the whole account and lose half of it, that's too big of a risk to take. Okay, so this uh, one principle of radioactive trading is probably the defining principles. I like to say instead of uh, uh, instead of picking stocks, let's pick stops. You know, in any game of chance, there's a wager that's too small to make a difference if you win, and there's also a wager that's too large because mm -hmm. of the risk of ruin. And that's why this uh, central principle is so important. Okay. Now, uh, it's my contention, and I've been proving this, Mike, for for years and years, and it, it was part of the topic of uh, of my lecture at MIT, was that the market itself will tell you how much to risk in any one position if you allow it to. Okay, and uh, I've heard this uh, this argument before, and I'm going to say no, it's it's not true. Okay, uh, Mike, have you heard this that a long call is identical to a married put? Yes, I never, of course, like to use the the term identical because no two positions, in my opinion, are ever identical. There are some things that are referred to as parity trades as one another, such as uh, naked puts, for example, and covered calls. Um, but the greatest thing that we always hear, Kurt, isn't it, is that the long call is identical but better to a married put, right? Right. It's identical but better. What does that mean? <laughs> well, it's an oxymoron, uh, I, isn't I, it? I, yeah, it sure is an oxymoron, kind of like uh, military intelligence or uh, Microsoft Works. You know, <laughs> it's a self-contradicting statement. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, an, an identical, uh, I'm sorry, a, a long call is not identical to married put. Let me ask you this, Mike. If you were to place a married put trade, right, where you put up ten thousand dollars to buy stock and and you put up another five thousand dollars to to buy the put option that insures it, mm -hmm. but instead of being delivered that, you were delivered uh, a long call option, would you be happy? Well, no, I wouldn't because I was buying the stock for a specific reason. I wanted to own stock whether I wanted to, to take advantage of the dividend or maybe I wanted a, a one delta you know, on the underlying stock position. If my broker filled me with a long call, I would not be happy. Yeah. You, um, one of the reasons you wouldn't be happy is that you, you'd be missing a lot of capital, wouldn't you? That's right. <laughs> All right. So they're not identical. If they're identical, they'd be interchangeable, but they are not interchangeable. Okay. Now here is how they're similar. All right. If we look at the uh, the risk reward graph. All right. First of all, it is a bullish strategy. Secondly, uh, it is safer. Right. And thirdly, the reward is potentially unlimited. All right. We look at the protective put and the long call graph, and it looks almost identical. All right, but there is a, a parity, okay, but I want to show you something, okay? Mike, can you see the screen okay? I'm looking at, uh, and you can do this on just, just about any issue. Mm -hmm. um, if you go out, this, this is, uh, geez, the January 10 calls, but I did this in 2008. All right, if you go out a couple of, a couple of years, all right, and, and you look at any strike of put, okay? Right over here, we're looking at the... $65 strike, 